This show is sponsored by ODYS Global. Make sure that you do sign up and get a free $100 bonus by checking out ODYS Global's Age Domains or Done For You affiliate websites. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 32 of SEO Tells. I'm Itamar Blau, I'm joined by Craig Campbell and today we're going to be talking about hosting and hosting providers and when you're starting out, how do you know which is the best hosting provider to pick, what type of hosting should you get, the pros and cons of the different types, etc, etc. So Craig, for people who aren't aware of I guess, different types of hosting plans that you can get. Could you just give us an overview of what you can expect when you're about to purchase hosting for your website? So you've got various different options. Um, obviously, you've got you know a, a million different companies out there, out there all basically offering the same thing. But you've also got cloud hosting. Um, you know, you've got all these kind of different platforms where you've got AWS, which is Amazon, you've got Google Cloud, and, and you hear all of these pros and cons of jumping on these different hosting accounts. Now, you know, I've tried a lot of hosting accounts over the years, and, and you know, you, you hear these various different options, but within those options, you've also got shared hosting accounts, which is a server that, that you know, is going to be for beginners, like Itamar might be on there, I might be on there, and, you know, 10 other guys might all be in the one server, um, and, you know, until that server's full, then they will continue selling the, the space that's available on there for all these kind of, you know, rookie beginner websites. As your website grows, um, you know, you potentially maybe want to have what is a, known as a virtual dedicated server, which is a dedicated server that's yours and yours only. Um, obviously, it costs more money and uh, you're then not slowed down or, you know, by the resources that are on that server. So let me give you the example again that I just gave. So me, Itamar, and, and five other guys are on the server. Um, Itamar's grown at an amazing rate. He's getting all this traffic and he's putting all this shit in his website. That server and, and all the kind of, you know, resources that are in that server are being, dra you know, drained to death by Itamar. And my website starts running like a piece of shit because he's draining all the resources on it. So you have to think about that first and foremost. Who are you on that server with? Are they on there scrimping and scraping? Because guys buy cheap hosting and then overload it with a big dirty e-commerce website. Now, do I want to be in the sh same shared server as that guy? Absolutely no chance. You know, there's guys on there that, you know, use cheap hosting and then try and throw up something that's really, um, uh, you know, intensive on, on the RAM and stuff like that, like Magento, for example. Someone could be trying to run a Magento website on your shared server, which they should never have. They should be on a dedicated Magento server. So you don't know who's on the next server. You don't have access to that. The hosting company are not going to tell you. But if you want that kind of five bucks a month hosting, then that's a risk you're going to take. Now, Again, I reference Itamar and five other guys or whatever it might be. These could all be porn stars, and I'm in digital marketing. Now, do you want to have your IP address and your server associated with all of that stuff? Absolutely no chance. Um, so, you know, thinking cheap, you know, cheap is good um, at the start when you've gone out and you want a cost-effective solution. But when you see these options like cheap hosting on a shared server dedicated server and the various other options around that the you know if you do not want to be associated you don't want bogged down with someone then a dedicated server is the, the right choice for you now it also comes down to the platform that you're going to be on as well you know you might not just have some crappy little blog that you're throwing up you might be using magento for e-commerce for example and uh Certain servers are optimized for Magento. So there's specialist servers out there for Magento. Now, we know that most hosting companies will give you the ability to install most off-the-shelf CMSs, um, including Magento, Joomla, WordPress, and you know all of the other stuff that's out there. Um, that doesn't mean it runs well. <laughs> and I think you... I had a guy once 
and uh, it had this massive, it was a clothing store, um, and it was on Magento, and it, the website just ran like a piece of garbage. Now, when four or five people were on there trying to buy the clothes, his website basically didn't function. It just did not move. Um, now, <clears throat> I basically got off the phone to the hosting company, because the guy's like, nah, man, the hosting company's, you know, this, that, and the next thing, and... Uh, the, the hosting company basically said, Craig, this guy's trying to run a business that he wants to turn over a million a year from something, and that, not this iPhone, by the way, but it was it was years ago, and I think the, the, the best iPhone had something like eight gigs in it, um, you know, of, of uh, RAM or memory or whatever you want to call it, and the guy said he's trying to run a million pound business from an iPhone. That's his server capacity. Um, the guy is a cheapskate, he really needs a dedicated server, you know, Magento is, and that's where I understood that Magento is uh, memory hungry, you know, a lot more memory hungry than WordPress, for example, you know, it's just needs a lot more resources to be able to function faster and stuff like that. And basically, the, the, the hosting company were saying, listen, this guy's a nutcase, you know, he's trying to, to run, uh, a, you know, a massive website on a crappy iPhone and that just doesn't tally up. It's not going to work. And no matter who he gets, it says they can optimize and make the website faster. The bottom line is the foundation that he's on is always going to be slow because he's a cheapskate. Um, and eventually that guy did go and he got a, a dedicated server for Magento from UK Fast. Um, and it was all optimized for Magento, that specific server. And it did run a hell of a lot better. So it's not just a case of where do you go and host your website, jump over here and get the cheapest deal going. Um, there's a lot more thought to go into it. Um, likewise, what we said in last week's show, it's very easy to just jump in and go for the best deal. But you could be jumping in there uh, and it's the same way, you know, would you ever share a house or share a hostel with, uh, you know, some armed robbers and, and, you know, potentially some murderers? Absolutely not. So it's who you're surrounded by. And uh, you wouldn't set foot in a, you know, a hostel with those guys in it. Why would you ever put your business into a hostel, if you like, with those guys surrounding it? So, yeah. That, I, uh, think, I think that's... It's, it's a good example, I think, uh, with the hostel as well. Because mind you, I mean, the example you gave before is like me, you, and five other people. In a lot of shared hosting plans, there's maybe 10 times the amount of, of people there as well. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you need to seriously plan, uh, first of all, how much traffic you intend to get onto the site, how big the site's going to be, how many resources it's going to need. Um, but also, I think when it comes to picking a hosting provider. Now, this is not so much about the plans that you get, whether it's a shared hosting account or a dedicated hosting account, but also having a provider that allows you you to control the, the files and a bunch of other things, because there are certain hosting companies out there who, for example, won't give you access to the, the kind of files on the back end, or they won't um, let you access your like cPanel or something like that. And if you want to do redirects, you have to use their own kind of way to, to do redirects and all these kinds of things that I think are important to take into account because there's been times where people have, have kind of told me they started a site and I was checking who their hosting company was and I was trying to, to edit things on HT access or set up like a robots TXT for them but I couldn't because you couldn't physically access it from the hosting provider. So, you know, there's loads of back and forth emails with the hosting company and this kind of stuff. So that's also something to, to keep in mind as well. You know, you want to have as much control over the, the entire site um, as you can, no matter if you're getting a shared hosting or dedicated hosting. But Craig, what is, from your experience, what's the hosting provider that you go with? And can you just explain like why you decided to choose them over loads of other ones? Um, so the one that I use the most is a company in the UK called TSO Host or TSO Host or whatever you want to call them. Um, now, the reason I use them, I've used them for probably 14 years now. I used to use one in one prior to that. Um, 
and one and one were just hellish. I don't know what they're like now, but back in the day, the support was awful. Um, it was just garbage. Everyone was on them at that time, and um, I felt that I just needed a better hosting provider. And uh, Tiso Host back then, um, they, they were actually called Vida Host at the time. They, they, they then changed over to Tiso Host. Um, but they, they at the time basically allowed you to install WordPress at the push of a button. <laughs> um, whereas on one and one, um, you could host WordPress on there, but it was the old manual installation of WordPress and it was a whole lot of fucking around. You know, it took you like an hour to to manually install WordPress on there. So for me, um back then, you know, I was working for a whole bunch of clients and I just needed fast, quick WordPress one click installs um, and cheap cost effective hosting which also had UK support. And uh, for me, that was the biggest selling point was you could pick up the phone 24 hours a day and you would get someone in the UK that you could just say, listen, dude, I've, I've got this problem. And they were very, very helpful. And I've, I'd stuck with them ever since, to be honest. They were a great company. I do believe they've now been bought over by GoDaddy, but they still keep the branding as they are. Um, but... <coughs> For years, I've just used them. They've been really good. Now, I have used other ones like Fast Hosts. I've used SiteGround. I've used. I've got. I've got many different hosting accounts. But Tiso Host were the ones for me that was like a small family friendly run company, and they just had like the people knew who you were, so they weren't a massive hosting company at the time. So like you know, they you had a bit of a a rapport with the people there and they actually just done a hell of a lot more than anyone else um, for you in terms of support. They'd be like, oh, your website's been hacked, Craig, you know, I've cleaned up this bit, you know, just make sure that you, you keep your plugins up to date and so on. So the guys would bend over backwards and for me, when you get a service like that, you don't really tend to look elsewhere. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had the likes of fast hosts and they've been really good. One downside though, and it's something I want to highlight here, is I bought a dedicated server from Fasthost, and I didn't really understand, because uh, Tiso Host or Vida Host, whatever they were called at the time, it's a managed service. Now, I went to Fasthost, and I wanted a dedicated server that had all different IP addresses on it for PBNs, if you want to call it that. And uh, so they gave me that, and then something happened, and uh phoned the support, and they were like, yeah, just go onto the root of the server and run this command and this, that, and the next thing. And I'm like, no, can you not go on and run that command? Like, I've, I've, how did I even get? I didn't know you could access the root of the server. And they're like, no, this is not a managed service, mate. This is like, uh, you know, you do do it yourself. Uh, and I'm like, dude, I have no idea what running a, a running a command in a server means, let alone where to put that command or anything. And I. Uh, had to actually pay that guy something like £65 an hour to fix the problem I had with my server. So when you're getting hosting, make sure it's a managed service if you're a dummy like me who doesn't know how to run a command because, again, I just grabbed it and I thought everyone offered a managed service. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really important, I think, as well, because you don't want to be put in that situation where you can encounter, I guess, things that are surprising or, or things that you don't know how to do and then you end up having to pay more for it and but i think the back's against the wall as well because i urgently needed this fixed because hmm. it was costing me money um and i don't think i just had pbns on it i think i had client websites on it and the server was down um, and people were phoning me and i'm like do you need to fix this and he's just like basically a gun to my head 65 pound an hour and i'm like yeah 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 just do it fucking basically taking all my money because i had a clue how to do it so yeah but i feel like over the years hosting company at least the good ones have kind of uh, been a bit more helpful i mean like the, i've i've tried various different types of hosting in the past and i remember back in the day using godaddy i think was the first kind of uh, platform i used to buy domains and then host the sites but like their, their support just wasn't there and there were so many hidden costs and things that could go wrong. And, you know, maybe that's changed now. I don't know. I haven't used them uh, since. It's probably been over 10 years since I've used them. But 
Um, I think now, like the site that I've got, I was using SiteGround, and a lot of people, when they're starting out, I'm pretty sure do use SiteGround. I feel like their support is is really really good because they kind of do explain exactly how to like they give you step by steps, and they've got loads of people working for their support teams and things like that. But I think there's just so many things to consider, and obviously, you know, don't be afraid of of changing a a hosting provider, especially if they're either treating you like garbage or they're taking too much of your money or their things aren't working because uh, that's something also that you can consider but again it's all situational so you know if your back's against the wall and you urgently need something done then that's just something that you might have to to just take on the chin i suppose but yeah you've got to, take, you've got to eat it up one thing i would say about SiteGround though when you mention the metamar SiteGround offer really good deals when you sign up just be careful when that year expires. Very often you find that the price trebles, um, and that's something I don't actually like about SiteGround, is they give you some massive 40% off or 50% off or whatever it's going to be for the first year, um, and then they just sting you on the second year, and, and, and by that time sometimes you just forget, and you're just like, oh, just let it go, let it go. You know, you can't be bothered moving. Just be careful of that one with SiteGround. They're a great company, great hosting. I've got them myself, but you need to keep an eye on them. Yeah, I think read the fine print anyway. I mean, that's something that you always have to do when you're looking for these services. So, um, and hosting companies, yeah, again, especially even if you're trying to buy a domain name, sometimes it's like that as well. You might get a good deal and then you find out your renewal costs are going to be double or something like that so um, it's just something to keep in mind but i think generally speaking uh when you're starting out you know you might not have the money to go for a a dedicated hosting plan and that's okay that's something that i feel like if especially if it's a new site you're not going to get you know uh, fifty thousand a hundred thousand visits every single uh month on your site most likely when you're just starting out so it's just something to at least have an understanding of the different plans that you can go for. And if you feel like you ever want to, to leap from, let's say, a shared hosting plan um, to a dedicated hosting plan, at least so you know what the benefits are and what that actually entails. So that's what we've tried to, to cover in this video. So hopefully it kind of gives you a better idea if you're starting off in terms of how to approach um, getting the hosting for your site once you've already got the domain name. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this video uh, on SEO Tells episode 32. And if you did enjoy the video, leave a like rating below and subscribe to the channel. And on behalf of Craig and myself, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.